Ladies and gentlemen, we are very happy to welcome all of you to see and hear you. So I'm used to conducting online classes for my students, but an online conference is a very first and for, uh, ever experience for me, so we're going to do it together, I'm sure. So today we're going to look at green solutions for universities, best practices, and for universities, green solutions are really important. Yet what uh, the society expects from us is that by developing our green technologies, we should not forget about our society. We are moving towards it, and ideally all the green technologies that that the universities are to develop in this way or another will be uh, used and will be in demand by the society. I would like to begin today's discussion by introducing the panelists. Uh, Nina, Yanina Dmitrakova, PhD, biology lecturer at the Energy and Eco Technology Faculty, Itmo University. Mr. Sergei Khmilevsky, also representative from the Itmo University. He's general director of Itmo High Park. Uh, online uh, will be uh, presenting uh, Mr. Olli Ervala, Director of Education Services and Responsibility, Southeast Finland University of Applied Scientists, and Ms. Melina Manula, RDI expert from Forest, Environment and Energy, Southeast Finland University of Applied Sciences. And one more presenter, Alexander Chusev, who is head of the Educational and Research Center of Engineering and Ecology from St. Petersburg Polytechnic University, named after Peter the Great. Today we're going to begin by calling upon Sergei Khmilevsky. Well, Sergei, today you represent a, a, a big project called High Park, which will embrace not only new campus uh, facilities of the Itmo University. However, uh, if we speak about the university mission at large, uh, it is also area-specific, some territorial-specific mission. A university establishes an area which uh, then will have to embrace uh, between six to uh, 12,000 uh, 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 just uh, uh, facilities for just new residential areas. Uh, according to the recent estimates, it will be up to 1,000, 100,000 people strong. So the universities are not only providing education, but also pr promote uh, the creation of new jobs. So, and one of uh, current uh, features of this particular university is that your university will be relying upon green technologies and internal combustion engines will be uh, banned out uh, on the vehicles that will seek entry into the campus. Could you brief us about the High Park project in general? general and specific green technology that you are envisaging for this campus. Thank you very much for inviting me. It is gratifying that such a, a green event is happening here in St. Petersburg. We carry out international events targeting our Scandinavian countries to promote experience exchange and cross-border experience exchange. I do represent a university uh, Itmo University project, which is uh, truly an orthodox one for the Russian Federation at least. I have a, a presentation. Um, uh, if you can put it on, I will provide comments. So, in essence, university, classic university, uh, uh, is no longer um, uh, a classic one. It is responsible for commercialization and transfer of technologies and innovative and other technologies for a circular economy in particular. Our campus will be based on a very um, original infrastructure for the northwest of Russia. Apart from the newly built university campus, it will include 
uh, development of uh, technologies uh, together with our industry partners on the basis of uh, research projects and facilities. Such venues, uh, which is quite a, an unorthodox solution, will uh, help integrate uh, science, research, uh, universities and business. Uh, and uh, it is an infrastructural venue itself. Uh, it's a new uh, area, new eight neighborhood of St. Petersburg. Uh, it's like a satellite city usually, and we're going to pursue this project up to 2035. So you, what you have put is the last slide in my presentation, if you could bring it to number one slide. A few words about the background to the project. Uh, if you could put uh, still another slide. Uh, so we started off in 2017 in partnership uh, with the best IT universities because we wanted to have a, a, a new quality campus. Uh, we uh, wanted to respond to the challenges of the 21st century and establish an infrastructure that will include, apart from the university campus, uh, spin-off university companies, small and medium business companies. And and also big industrial partners. So basing on such synergy, the university students would be having their internships uh, and uh, will be trained uh, by the leading market companies and players. And on the other hand, the university will transfer new innovative technologies through minor, small and medium businesses, uh, new technologies to the market, to the industries, and uh, will be training how to use new equipment and uh, new innovative products. The project itself presupposes a technological focus. A university focuses on uh, the quantum technology and the science, life sciences and smart technologies and artificial intelligence for, for the next 30 or so years. So we are again looking on the sustainable development goals and we are developing our technologies uh, uh, targeting uh, at uh, specific practical applications that might benefit the whole of the society and not only uh, remain some laboratory specific uh, innovation. So you see the major sustainable development goals that were set by the UN uh, institutions. And in order to achieve these goals, we need to promote the development of new innovative technologies. Here we can see where these new technologies can be used in order to achieve the sustainable development goals in a direct uh, link with the businesses that are to introduce these innovative technologies into mass production and practice. And uh, uh, together we will promote uh, the development of circular economy. Next slide, please. So the university applied uh, for the, uh, this project. So we have a, a management company. Uh, uh, St. Petersburg uh, and private investors are partners in this uh, major investment project. So uh, it's about 630 million US dollars strong project. Uh, so the major part being in uh, uh, just uh, is responsibility of it more. And uh, some improvement works will be the responsibility of the local municipality and new jobs and new industries will be created in the process of it. So about 10% percent will, of these will be following the major principles of circular economy. And I will further say a few words about it. Uh, we are planning for a business incubator uh, that will uh, be working with smart ups 
as uh, we now call them, uh, uh, to develop the uh, surrounding areas and uh, following the logic of circular economy with all its links and uh, interrelations. We are planning uh, in the field of food tech and life sciences uh, have this mentoring investor link and uh, organic uh, waste uh, processing and others. Uh, so we're planning to create uh, uh, the organic uh, foodstuffs using the local farms for the neighboring area and uh, also recycle the organic waste into energy, compost and electric and power for the uh, state for the farms. Also we are going to invest uh, and it attract uh, not only university uh, residents, but we seek to establish an online platform that will target uh, at northwest of Russia and probably some of the Finnish possible partners, which will uh, bring it to a new cross-border level. So it's going to be the aggregator of technology and uh, a platform to uh, look for further investment and platforms pl platforms and uh, industry, science industry link symbiosis. Another idea of ours is that the infrastructure we're going to provide will be based on the principles of green tech. Uh, in particular, we are now looking for Scandinavian partners in order to exchange experiences, uh, in, in order to create uh, uh, industrial or research buildings, uh, just seed buildings for university, passive buildings. And um, I wanted to use this platform to invite our prospect potential partners from Finnish, uh, Finland universities who would have a similar uh, experience and would be interested in cooperate life sciences, uh, artificial intelligence, and this uh, Innovation Center of a high park project will be a hub to attract small to medium-sized businesses and over a decade's uh, time will grow into a, a big um, expertise center for green technologies and uh, science business symbiosis. So I would uh, like to welcome all the ones who are interested to um, become our partners at the early stage of uh, design and development. Well, we are now embarking upon the creation of Innovation Center. The campus uh, part of the project has already been completed. So here's uh, a case uh, about us, ITMO High Park project. Just to distract, uh, have you discussed the technological value? Will there be any privileges for the companies located there? In general, in the Russian Federation, there is a program on development of technological values based on universities, and it is open, and it is uh, implemented by the Ministry for Economic Development of the Russian Federation. We have submitted our application for getting the uh, status of a facility working at the, uh, the technological value. Probably this year we'll receive that status. And uh, having that status for that territory, and that is a territorial status, it is planned to have some privileges for the residents. Um, but uh, uh, social tax uh, is uh, reduced by one half. That is related to the policy of the Russian Federation uh, aimed at uh, development of innovative economy uh, and for uh, those companies that are dealing with R&D and implement uh, technical development into production, I think that measure should be efficient. Will be uh, that measure applied for the Russian companies, for the foreign companies, for all the companies located in this territory, that is a territorial measure according to the laws. Uh, these should be the Russian legal entities. And the owners can be foreign companies. Companies, but uh, the foreign company might set up 
a subsidiary in the Russian Federation using uh, that uh, privilege. Thank you very much. That was very interesting. Probably there are questions in the uh, and network, and you can ask these questions, if any. And we are passing on to the presentation of the second speaker. Not only due to ITMO University, but mainly due to the program in which ITMO University participates. There will be a new town with 100,000 residents. They will inhale air and exhale some other things they will use, uh, they will eat the feedstuffs uh, grown on green farms and uh, all uh, these uh, types of waste and garbage will form. Uh, can our university offer anything so that the town that will be constructed uh, from the start will become not only the town that consumes minimum en energy, but also a town that would have the minimum impact on the environment in terms of harmful effect. Thank you very much. The theme of my today's presentation uh, was uh, dealing with waste primarily, and I wanted to draw your attention to a separation of the waste. I understand that in Finland that theme probably doesn't require any special discussion. That is a normal practice, and in Russia that is uh, so far a challenge. If in Finland there is a conflict uh, between uh, re uh, people from other countries and local residents, that is commonly a conflict on the site where waste uh, is collected. I tried to become a person collecting uh, just waste, and I started with plastic. I took a package and I collected all the plastic bottles. I come to Ashan, I go to the center where they collect uh, the uh, waste, and they say that you have done something wrong, just wait a little. So they, you have to look at each bottle from uh, the bottom, and probably I'm not quite green as yet, because I have fifth, uh, I can't have five, uh, six or seven packages at home for different types of bottles, and uh, the, fee, uh, the fins uh, collect them in this way. If you uh, eat yogurt, you have to wash the plastic uh, bowl. Uh, uh, I know that they are educated from the kindergarten, and for them that is normal practice. For instance, when you uh, have a tea bag, you would separate it into the uh, foil and into the uh, part with the tea. And those who started uh, separating waste at home, uh, they uh, commonly regard it as normal, uh, normal practice, and you have to think about it for several minutes. When I pass, uh, when I come to the bins with different types of waste, I have to think about it. On one hand, uh, on the one hand, I have, for instance, a tea bag with a sheet of paper and metalized surface of the package. So will you please show my presentation? That is my main theme of the presentation. We are sorting at universities. I would like to start with the role of the universities in sustainable development. As, as the institutes, we can play a significant role uh, in uh, affecting sustainable development because we educate huge leaders. We are focused on innovative projects, on the research, and we have a possibility to embody into life such projects that are not accessible for municipalities or certain companies. Next slide, please. We have two uh, basic trends uh, to advance all the uh, goals of sustainable development, and these uh, trends should go, so to say, hand in hand, run uh, parallel to interact. But so far, they are far away from each other. That is theory and practice. If uh, we have a well-developed scientific base, 
держим руку на пульсе. And we are just taking care of all the innovative practices and projects. We incorporate them into our curriculum and we are improving them. As to the management of the material and technological base of the universities, it is uh, not uh, uh, up to date uh, quite often, and I think that the implementation of it more high park will help us solving all our problems, but that will be the first experience. We also have a great number of old campuses, and other universities have nothing of the kind, even at the development stage of such a high park. Hence, practice and theory are too far away from each other, and uh, we can uh, uh, just presume that we teachers and the administration of the high schools, including the students, should show our responsibility not only delivering, delivering lectures and uh, discussing, but in our daily life. And the administration of the university should also uh, uh, comply with these sustainable development goals. SDG. One of the problems which we have to face and which we can combat is the problem of waste. In 2014, in Russia, about 35 billion tons of waste were accumulated and collected. This is an integrated problem. It uh, is recorded not only in Russia, it is quite topical for the whole world. On the one hand, there is a acute shortage of good experts that might predict the entire process of emergence of the waste, its removal, the entire logistics and processing and recycling. And of course, this is infrastructure as well. Uh, yet, where is garbage sent in Russia? 94% of garbage goes to the landfills. We have 13,000 large, even huge landfills, and they take four uh, areas. The area is four areas of Cyprus, that is four million hectares. And there are some unauthorized or illegal uh, dumps, uh, dumps, that is one of the aspects of this uh, problem. In 2016, uh, more than 60,000 unauthorized uh, landfills were recorded, and each year the number is doubled. The second photo on the slide shows uh, the landfill with hazardous waste, mercury-containing lamps. That was revealed in Leningrad uh, district in the territory of the Nature Protected Zone when a woman wanted to pick mushrooms there. Uh. We are waiting for the next slide. Two percent of waste in Russia is incinerated, and only from four to four, uh, from four to eight percent, is sent for recycling. In the course of our polls, we often hear that in Russia there is no possibility of uh, uh, recycling the waste, uh, therefore uh, people uh, are not sorting or separating waste. In fact, we have about 2,500 recycling plants in Russia, and virtually all of them are uh, under-operating, so we have uh, all the possible reason to resolve this problem. Next slide. Uh, at our department, we are trying to resolve the problem of the shortage of experts. We have a very good educational uh, program in the uh, sphere of uh, safety. We also have a joint project with our Chinese uh, colleagues uh, dealing with zero waste or waste-free passing on to waste-free uh, production in St. Petersburg. And we have a lot of educational courses on this theme. As I already mentioned, 
в то время как научно In practice, sorting or separation of waste at Titmo is far from being ideal. And I ask all the students, the administrations and the teachers uh, uh, to start uh, sorting the waste first. We'll uh, reduce the negative impact on the environment and we'll uh, observe the laws. We'll save the budget and we'll show our responsibility. I uh, previously worked at the Leningrad State University and St. Petersburg State University and I have a good experience of practical implementation of that uh, idea. At our university, their uh, board of directors, together with the environmental department, uh, compiled an annual plan on improving uh, separation of waste. We discussed all the measures and infrastructure as applied for each uh, department. As far as I know, at ITMO, at the moment, the initiative on separate waste collection is uh, primarily coming from the students. It would be ideal when all the components will be involved in the process. Next slide, please. As far as I know, at Saint P at the ITMO University and at the Polytechnic, uh, the question concerning separate waste collection is uh, discussed in the contracts on removal of common mixed waste. And they hope that there will be a regional operator who would appear. We, when I worked at St. Petersburg State University, we selected uh, several counterparties on the key parameters that are listed uh, on the slide. And um, my main idea is that, unfortunately, regional operator exists only on paper at the moment. And I suggest that you would analyze the market uh, uh, not uh, considering one option, uh, but find uh, different uh, solutions that might be beneficial for you. As to the results of implementation of separate uh, waste collection, uh, that is a very successful practice. During the period from 2015 to 2018, 600 tons of recyclable materials were collected, including 150 uh, tons of scrap uh, metal, non-ferrous metals. And my conclusions, my main conclusions are as follows. We have a very uh, strong scientific base that I have mentioned. We have common programs. We implement innovative uh, projects. However, our main task is to bring together all the participants of the university, the administration, teachers and the students to set up a common center. And one of the messages is to set up on the basis of our department the a consultational center where each person would come and get the information free of charge. Uh, here she might ask her questions as to where to put, for instance, that sheet of paper, how he would learn to sort the waste up to the uh, facilities that would like to implement that uh, separate waste collection, asking whether they need the waste certificate. Is it uh, a recycled material? Is it a waste? What law would be applicable? And I suggest that you also would engage in educational activity and ask everyone to sort the waste uh, within the premises of the university. But I very much liked uh, the idea of that high park, and I think that this is a project that has to be developed. Uh, quite intensely. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yenina. I can tell you that I have several modules of uh, having classes with students. We develop uh, different projects. 
at least half of the project are selected by the students uh, that are related to environmental protection. I have a favorite project. Uh, there is a, a project uh, just a bowl for coffee, and we have invented the uh, project a bowl for beer because there are different beer uh, well uh, festivals with a lot of uh, plastic waste. Uh, and as to the uh, coffee bowls, they use the caramel so that it would not leak. And the second uh, idea is the uh, just bowl for beer, glass for beer, you might uh, just uh, and the animals, a uh, bird would eat that uh, glass of caramel afterwards. As to the common regional operator, will be as uh, will that be a salvation for waste removal? Or on the contrary, for instance, one person, one businessman, came to me and he asked to establish collection of plastic, uh, tin, and what else? Bumaga paper. I'm not sure about paper, plastic glass and aluminium, not uh, tin, but aluminium. So he wanted to do it and to agree with the janitors so that would help, they would help collecting it. And if we take, uh, collect uh, plastic bottles, if we take a large uh, house, the container would be filled uh, in several days. Uh, but uh, he know, uh, noted if, if there is a common region operator, all the waste coming to the uh, uh, waste collection site would be the uh, own ownership of one operator. So you have to capture the waste until it reaches the site for waste collection. Otherwise, it would be uh, just uh, the stealing of the waste. There was an American film about uh, stealing the waste. What do you think, a common operator, is it a benefit or is it a threat? The law uh, states uh, quite uh, beautifully that it is a benefit, but when such operator appears, that is a major question, because two years ago I worked at the university when we tried to conclude an agreement with such operator, and they really had no possibility, they had, didn't have enough capacity. So working the previous men, I have mentioned Polytechnic and it more that follow uh, the model of the law, you have uh, one operator who collects uh, common uh, waste and uh, recycled material. Uh, they are not interested in it. There is enough work for them to do. They just can cope with this part of the waste. So often the contracts with them are not quite beneficial for the university. And thus, when, when it uh, really happens, I don't know whether this operator would be interested in it. It looks good on paper, but as to the reality, it might be different. And our experience shows that quite quickly, uh, uh, containers or bins are uh, become full, uh, that depends on the size of the container. Well, there were some cases where the university we opened a uh, uh, station for waste collection and we published information, the social uh, media, because uh, they have to produce the passes coming to our university. People with their uh, bags uh, with waste try to come uh, to that uh, site for waste collection, but we cannot allow uh, people from the street uh, 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 coming to those sites. But the universities can offer the technologies, not only the technologies from the engineering viewpoint, but the, the technologies uh, take into account different administrative procedures. As far as I know, uh, there was an experiment of our city where different containers were set up for different types of waste. And then when people saw that everything is put together into one truck, People became disillusioned. I can answer this as well. As a person who has worked in that sphere for a long period of time, uh, there were also complaints, but it is important 
that the uh, uh, recycled products, recycled materials are clean. People don't want uh, how to sort. They bring uh, all types of plastic and put this plastic together. That is not the uh, that becomes a common waste. We even had some students uh, start up the. Uh, I was in Estonia uh, before the pandemic, and there is. Mm -hmm. uh, there are containers for collecting different bottles or tins uh, or cans. Uh, and one of the ten uh, well, uh, cans or bottles were returned. Everything else is recognized. They recognize what kind of plastic it is or uh, is it aluminum or not. Our students have set up a sort of a startup that was just an idea, the machine to which you throw different types of bottle or can, and people would not think uh, what they are really throwing away. So artificial intelligence is important, uh, uh, neural networks. Let the machine think what kind of bottle it is. Uh, they want to set up a system for removing uh, uh, the lids uh, on the bottle. Well, at any rate, uh, these technologies is, uh, sound very promising uh, as proposed by universities, and it's more, most important to implement them on these uh, areas, neighborhoods. Well, uh, we're not speaking about school uh, level uh, students, speaking about university students who will be dealing closely with all these issues during their studies. Thank you very much for your presentation. We are switching on to Olli Ervela. Um, Olli, are you there? Can we call upon you to present your paper. Yes, отлично. Вот. Uh, we have discussed the ITMO University and its projects. We also uh, uh, spoke about the Polytechnic University named after Peter the Great and the St. Petersburg State University. And uh, I've seen uh, uh, the container, uh, the, uh, the litter bin for separate waste collection, as you explained on our Birjevaya line, and uh, there were um, batteries, containers, uh, uh, collection points. It was very handy. I uh, used to um, amass these batteries at home and then dump them into this special collection point. And uh, we will uh, be looking at other Finnish universities and their experience to compare. So we can invite Mr. Olli Ervala. Hello. Mr. Olli, how are you? Can you hear us well enough? Uh, hmm? So I'm turning the floor over to you. Uh, are we ready with the presentation? Could we bring it on screen, please? I'm calling upon you, Oli, uh, to inform us about what is it that the Finnish universities do in terms of green technologies and solutions now. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I enjoyed the uh, previous session very much because uh, waste management management is is one of the key issues in in this this respect as well. Um, I just checked the uh, amount of waste that ends up in in landfill areas in Finland, and and it's nowadays less than five percent, I think. So we are quite far in that respect, but there's still a lot of work to do in 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 terms of uh, reducing waste recycling and waste management in in general. But uh, to start with my presentation, um, uh, could you please show the uh, next slide? Okay, um, introducing myself first. I'm Director of Education Services and Responsibility. Education Services is something that we provide for, for the uh, education, which is self-evident. Uh, we are quite a large uh, department. Uh, uh, we employ uh, about 100 
persons at the moment. Uh, there are uh, six, six departments that work uh, or report to me. Uh, E-campus e is something that needs a bit of explaining. It's a, it is a um, department that deals with online learning, uh, technological solutions, and and uh, we are we are creating platforms for online studies and so on. And then uh, uh, publication and uh, production services is something that we we do to help to produce uh, good quality uh, teaching material and and uh, publications. Libraries, self-evident, international services, of course, nowadays is is very difficult because of the coronavirus. But we we are uh, we are waiting for for better days. Also, I'm responsible for for student well-being services and ICT. All these uh, departments have to do with with green solutions as well. We are we are dealing with with digital digitalization. In, in every respect, we, we try to provide uh, remote services for, for all, all of all type. Thank you. And then uh, next slide, please. Okay. Um, benchmarking study is something that was done uh, done during the uh, twin uh, campus uh, project and one of our project teams were working on it. Next slide, please. Uh, and uh, this is this my presentation is not so much uh, about about uh, education and research or their, their um, uh, curricula or, or the uh, research objects, but this is more more what what universities can do as organizations and um, benchmarks marking, mark, uh, benchmarking study was something that uh, xamx uh, uh, project team uh, did uh, last year and the idea was was to benchmark three other finnish higher education institutes and and also then look how our actions uh, see from that point of view uh, then we had some uh, workshops, and and the uh, the uh, results will be then then uh, uh, published later on this year. Uh, next slide, please. When we uh, compared, or the uh, uh, research team compared the uh, uh, other universities, we we all see that the uh, sustainability is is a an inter, inter, integral part of the uh, strategy in, in all the universities and uh, motivating staff and students is something that uh, is is also very important uh, carbon neutrality reducing uh, carbon footprint print is something that we all share and then then we we all have uh, uh, separate teams for coordinating this this development and next slide, please. And we, XAMC, we like to call us XAMC, Southeastern Finland University of Applied Sciences is very long, so XAMC is a bit easier. We have uh, um, constructed our own responsibility program, and this is this is now being reviewed. It's it's only two years old, but but the uh, development is so fast that we have to renew this this year uh, responsibility program is something that we we are uh, actually try, we, we try to define what are the ways what are the import, important themes concerning sustainability and responsibility and also then uh, every year we look at the uh, th uh, themes that we have set and look at how we have done this year and then report on that. So we, we are also writing a responsibility report. Then we, we are concentrating on, on uh, campus everyday life with the help of uh, World Wildlife Fund. 
uh, and their and their uh, green office system. This is something that helps us in our daily life to to make sure that all the functions in the uh, campus is is uh, sustainable. United Nations Global Compact is something that we have quite recent, recently joined. It's a it's a very big network of, of uh, organizations, and um, um, most of them are, are uh, companies. But we we thought that this is perhaps a good way to step up once again and to be more ambitious, ambitious and join this. We decided to join join this uh, network of uh, actually uh, 13,000 companies in, in 160 countries. So this is a very good good network to, to actually reflect our own actions. Also, our, our new campus in Kotka will be built, um, or start, they, we will start building it next year, hopefully, and it will be ready uh, 2023. Uh, it is quite moderate compared to your high park. Uh, the uh, estimated uh, cost of the, uh, the new building is around 40 to 45 million euros. But of course, the uh, sustainable development responsibility factors have been taken into account in the uh, in the uh, building, and we are trying to achieve a sort of uh, uh, environment certificate for, for the building as well. Um, it includes various uh, energy solutions, new, new te technology for ICT, and, and of course, all, all kinds of new things. And like the previous uh, speakers stated, the, uh, the the problem with with many universities is that when you try to try to, for instance, uh, recycle waste or or do all all sorts of modern things, the uh, the old campuses do not work very well. So when when we have a new campus, we can all, also take into account all 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 these new ideas. Okay, uh, next please. And one of our our partner partner university Sten Haka Helia. Uh, similarly, they have their their goals set for for reducing electricity, heat, and water, as we do, and they are also also part of a, a United Nations principles for responsible management of education. They are they have uh, built a a relatively new campus in in Porvo. And that's a very, very uh, sustainable example as well. Um, next, please. University of Helsinki is has set its goal to be a pioneer in responsibility and sustainability. And of course, when you talk about uh, uh, regular universities, we are talking about research activities and of course teaching as well. They are, they are uh, University of Helsinki is an active partner in very, various networks, of course, and the, it's it's a big, biggest player in Finland, so they are very important. And uh, an interesting feature in their their uh, target is the uh, uh, commit commitment to end investing in fossil fuels. And next, please. And La Peranta University of Technology. Uh, they aim to be carbon negative, not only neutral by 2024. This is very important. And like we, they have a green campus and they have actually won a, a prize for it in, in 2013 already. And then they have a very imp interesting junior university program with, with the other, other uh, education establishments. And next, please. And the last slide here, uh, I was trying to, trying to wonder what the uh, future role of universities would be. 
I, I think the most important thing is, of, if, of course, networking with with other universities and other educational in, in the, uh, institutions locally and globally. And of course, nowadays it's very important to network at, with companies as well. And uh, to provide science-based data and research results for decision-making and makers is, is a very important part for, for universities, and, and which, is, which is of course then a basis for political decision makers and practicing what we are preaching is is an important part as well this means that the the university cannot just teach or research uh, matters of of importance but they have to work accordingly and uh, we are of course we are trying to reduce footprint and increase handprint handprint uh, here is a is a relatively new term meaning meaning uh, various ways of reducing footprint and uh, the in, in with the help of 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 science research and and education and that was all это все спасибо Thank you very much, Oli. I have two questions after your presentation. Number one question is, what is carbon negative? What, is, uh, what do you mean by negative uh, carbon consumption? How can we reduce uh, carbon circulation? to achieve negative values. As far as I understand, uh, so you absorb more carbon than you emit. So how is that physically possible? Well, you have to ask that from the uh, La Perana, Ranta U University, but that's the idea that you actually, actually absorb more than you produce. And there are various ways, ways of doing it, but uh, I'm not an expert in that field, but uh, that's their, their uh, goal anyway. Mm -hmm. Uh, we just discussed it with our colleagues before we joined the meeting. We were thinking of uh, green planting as being one of such uh, possible uh, tools. Uh, it'll uh, increase the absorption uh, rate and volume of carbon. Does green planting, forest planting, will it help? Yeah, that's, that's one way of doing it, of course. So, here's still a second question. Can you elaborate on the difference uh, between footprint and handprint in your last slide? Well, footprint is all, all, always the uh, negative impact, whereas the handprint is the positive impact. So, that's, that's very short, but I think you get the idea. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for a very interesting um, uh, presentation. We have a lot to learn, in, in particular about reducing footprint and increasing hat handprint. It's not that we have to seek reducing uh, 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 CO2 emissions, but just to increase its uh, kind of consumption, so to speak. Uh, as far as I know, there are uh, certain projects seeking to um, uh, uh, just uh, accumulate CO2 through big ventilator installations uh, just to capture it and use it for energy production. Yes, so just to produce uh, uh, fuel uh, just cells, uh, which is a good technology, modern and innovative. So it's a very good idea we could take on board uh, in, uh, for example, Kotka Seed Campus. Uh, it will be a good motivation and a positive example for, for businesses. And we will start from tree planting, green planting, as a more classic uh, way around it. So I, I've seen it as a 
a vast piece of land. So if I come there in 10 years' time, I'll see it's all built up. I used to visit Lapin Rant uh, uh, te uh, Technological University. They are using a symbol of a, a, a bicycle uh, as a technology image. And there was a, 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 a garage for bicycles. Uh, and on top of that, there were uh, solar cells. And all the bikes were electric bikes. Uh, so you can pick it up to move from one building of the campus to another because it was a big campus so then you park it uh, and it'll get recharged by solar cells as far as I have seen the pictures of Hyde Park the situation like that I like this project the participants can move between it more uh, uh, buildings free of charge. <laughs> I have never used that opportunity because I have a high weight. But uh, there are some vehicles that can even endure my weight. I would like to get some information about it, Mohai Park. You discussed the green campuses and everyone is using green technologies. Is it planned to get uh, the certificate of green construction. As to the high park, the philosophy of the project involves the support of the local uh, developers and emulation of uh, local decisions when possible, and we developed uh, the uh, national standard of green construction, green zoom, that is an equivalent event, and we specially developed uh, that uh, standard for not only for buildings and universities, but for university campuses. That standard is in place. It is taken into account when planning the Hyde Park. It is in the uh, technical assignment for architecture and planning solutions. It was mandatory, and we are planning to have constructions in compliance with the standards and to certify this building. We'll want to move further. Not only to have a standard building, but the building uh, in the regime of circular economy, as a regime or in the regime of passive buildings, using the roof uh, as the source of energy, so that that would be an innovative park of the 21st century within the uh, financing provided by the state. So we count on the assistance of private companies, and that is important in terms of regulation. For instance, we have a smart uh, smart solutions for the campus. Uh, we uh, provided some contents to these solutions, but according to uh, the opinion of the state, there is no notion of smart decision that is uh, called uh, low power voltage, as they say. So you can uh, depart from the standard. We uh, once discussed uh, the need for certification of the building for the developer uh, that means excessive uh, funds uh, spent. It should be voluntary. And you told me when we discussed uh, the solutions for waste collection, if a person buys an apartment at the uh, building that is certified and energy efficient, the people are ready uh, to uh, buy apartments uh, with in these buildings and pay uh, a little more money at the start because they will in future pay less for the energy resources consumed. Not everyone would pay a lot for electric energy, for heating, because that is quite expensive. That concerns not only electric energy and uh, that also concerns your health, because special emphasis is placed on uh, air quality. Uh, according to the certification, uh, in the uh, rooms is uh, two or five times dirtier than uh, in the street. Uh, that is a major problem. It has been extensively discussed by the WHO uh, because it leads to a lot of diseases, and many people 
are looking for certified apartment because that is a contribution to their health. So we'll move to Finland once again, and our next speaker would be Melina Maunolu. Melina, can you hear us? Good afternoon. Oh, Melina, здравствуй. Um, Melina, мы тут много уже. Melina, we have discussed it more, and we have mentioned the our classic university. And now, would like to learn more about Ksank University. Uh, what is interesting about you? Thank you. It's great to be here, and it's been very interesting to hear about the development at Itma University. I'll be uh, telling you about uh, research, development, and innovation practices at Ksamk University. Um, you can really please start the presentation. Thank you. Just go to the next slide. Yes, uh, so <laughs> I'm Melina Maunla. I work as a RDE specialist at the Forest, the Environment and Energy Focus Area at Southeastern Finland University of Applied Sciences. And as Olli said, uh, as short XAMC. I work mainly at uh, Koskes Circular Economy Center of Excellence project. I will be telling you shortly about that at the end of my presentation, but before that, more generally about the research, development, and innovation uh, practices at XAMC and especially how they can promote circular bioeconomy. We have been talking about circular economy, uh, meaning um, the transition from the linear production model to a circular model where materials stay in use and waste is not produced. Bioeconomy, on the other hand, means that non-renewable materials are substituted with biomaterials and renewable materials. Go to the next slide. So, uh, I will be going through this, um, these general things very shortly, but um, anyway, um, most of our RDI activities are carried out through projects, and these projects are funded with EU national and private funding. Um, they, of course, are aimed at producing research data, um, as well as to develop new methods and products and services. Uh, and we, we base the subject of these projects to the needs of the region, as well as all our stakeholders. Next slide. XAMC has four focus areas of research development and innovation, being forest, the environment and the energy, sustainable well-being, digital economy, logistics and seafaring. Of course, the forest, the environment and energy focus area is more, most involved in developing green solutions, but I want to emphasize the opportunities that lie in combining different knowledge areas and having people from different backgrounds uh, working in the same projects. In addition to or um, as part of these focus areas, we have also different research units, uh, including Research Center for Bio and Circular Economy called Biosampo. And there are also many, many other research 
um, units, which you can see on the next slide. And here the ones um, marked with blue are the ones that are most related to developing green solutions. We can go to the next slide. So um, what I want to emphasize here is the cooperation between teachers and the students in our research projects. Uh, so there are thesis workers um, and we have different innovation camps and hackathons and these types of things that benefit students as well as um, RDE activities. Also, what is very important for um, having impact from our research is that the graduating students and some alumni help to transfer the knowledge into the companies. Next slide. And what is most important in our work is the cooperation. Um, our green and circular um, research development and innovation relies on close collaboration with industries, NGOs and public bodies. And that also ensures the impact that we have. Uh, research cooperation is often carried out in uh, jointly funded research projects and in them solutions can be developed and tested in cooperation with companies and through these projects we can support their innovation activities as well as identify existing business opportunities. We can go to the next slide. Uh, here I have listed just some of the ongoing projects that are connected to developing a circular bioeconomy. We have quite a large por por portfolio of projects, but here you can see that there are projects of different sizes that are connected to different industries uh, that are linked to circular economy, as well as there are different funding agencies for these projects. We can go to the next slide. So a few words about the project I'm working with right now, which in which we are forming a concept for a circular economy center of excellence to be built in Hyötyvirta business area in Kovala, Finland. We are seeking to have this attractive network oriented, entrepreneurial, innovative and in impactful center that would bring to... Okay, <laughs> I'm probably ending my presentation now. Did I go on too long or is there some kind of technical problem? This is the last slide, yes? Yes, this is the last slide. Milena, I wanted to ask you, Вы несколько раз сказали, что вы взаимодействуете, взаимодействуете с местными властями. Вот как происходит это взаимодействие? То есть университет влияет на какую-то политику? 
Uh, well, we are in constant discussion and we are trying to follow um, the strategic um, plans and we have a national plan for circular economy which has been um, which is quite new and there are a lot of new new um, um, <laughs> things that we are trying to comply with and uh, trying to uh, develop solutions to um, to respond to these new um, new objectives mm -hmm. uh, and where from does the initiative come does the initiative come from you or from local or from local authorities are you the driver are you pushing or are they pulling you uh, well i think that there are um two things there is of course uh because of um large po proportion of our funding comes from the eu um the um, the funding mecha mechanism has some um some directions that we need to follow, but of course we are trying to um, um, to think of such uh, projects that will benefit and utilize the regional capabilities that we have. If there is co-financing in the project coming from, does the uh, co-financing come from the university or do local authorities provide uh, co-financing? Um, local authorities often um, have access to uh, EU and national funding so that they can, uh, in the region, um, select projects that they want to uh, fund. And the green agenda now is probably among the top ones. Yes, definitely. Excellent, then you have complete interaction with local authorities and uh, the universities that were planning at Hyde Park in Etmold. The university affects regional development uh, since uh, Ksamk University uh, is located in small towns in Finland and the impact of the university on regional development is probably uh, much uh, greater than the impact of Itmo University in St. Petersburg, because in St. Petersburg we are one of the few universities, we're about three times smaller than po the Polytechnic. Well, I, I think that um, in both cases cooperation is extremely important and um, you can't go about these large global problems alone. So whatever the subject of a project is, you need to have the right partners to have the best impact that you can. Thank you very much, uh, Maunula. Your presentation was very interesting. And I think with our twin campus uh, project, we are just starting the cooperation that will take uh, uh, part in future because the, between the campus and Xang and other universities in Finland, probably uh, universities from St. Petersburg and Russia. So we are moving to the final presentation, last but not least, as they say. This, of course, the Polytechnic after Peter the Great is one of the oldest and well-known universities of our city. And I think that your PR is no less important than that of PR universities. We have very strong teams and you really can uh, give us some information. Could you show your work in the sphere of environmental protection, green solutions? Alexander Nikolai Chusev will take the floor. Okay. 
Good afternoon, uh, dear participants of the forum. So we just listened to uh, some concept-related uh, presentations, uh, focusing on concept-related solutions for universities. And I am going to look at some practical applications in green uh, studies that we are conducting in our campus of the St. Petersburg, Peter the Great Polytechnic University. University, and if you can put my presentation on, and while we're waiting for your presentation to appear on the screen, it's not just a campus, it's a, a big uh, neighborhood, and you just created a, a special vehicle to move uh, um, uh, within uh, your campus. So I wasn't focusing on this vehicle project, I was doing some other things. However, uh, I've been uh, dealing with green technologies for over 20 years. I was head of a department specializing in it for 20 years, civil uh, uh, construction and uh, applied technologies. Uh, and we were developing various uh, applied uh, technologies uh, for our city municipal economy. Uh, so today uh, we uh, have opened an educational and research center that is called Engineering Economy. It is targeting at graduate and postgraduate students, and uh, we provide some uh, continual uh, education services for other people in the city. But we are also seeking to uh, come up with specific, practical, uh, practically oriented uh, green solutions. So we can move uh, to slide number two because I already covered information uh, of the first slide. So this uh, 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 educational and research center engineering technology I'm head of includes several laboratories which used to be head uh, departments. So it's a, a laboratory of uh, sustainable development, physical and chemical methods of analysis and uh, uh, treatment of water. Uh, and uh, uh, we were pioneers in this regard. Uh, and back in the 19. 90s, we uh, started, so it was in the previous millennium even, so we started addressing these issues. Also, the Eco Design uh, Laboratory and Laboratory of Industrial Ecology, all of them are headed by uh, well esteemed authorities, professors in their field, and they have uh, the, the necessary equipment. Uh, for uh, research projects. <laughs> We see our main goal uh, uh, of establishing this eco camp campus as part of an overall goal uh, of the university. Uh, so this is uh, uh, to be top 100 by 2030. We are the major competitors within this state-announced uh, program. Uh, yes, uh, however, we seek to be complementary and act on the basis of mutual respect in introducing new innovative solutions in this environmental field. Our Polytechnic University was established as a major campus uh, it was then uh, uh, the peripheral area of St. Petersburg, and we were lucky to have the area of uh, the f uh, big forestry park, and we have our own treatment, water treatment facilities, and other uh, uh, venues. Uh, now we are basing on this infrastructure to create a new eco campus. We seek to pursue a new goal, and it is in line with the overall European trend of reducing CO2 emissions, reducing the uh, carbon footprint, and reducing the greenhouse gas emissions in the atmosphere. Next slide. Uh, can I stop you here to ask a question? Uh, you are going to build a new campus on the area of the existing one, uh, or are you going to use a new one? We have a major campus, which uh, is uh, bounded by uh, four streets. Uh, 
in uh, the neighborhood. Uh, it's a huge area together with its park and a lot of venues uh, of different years of construction, even uh, listed buildings that are protected by the states as landmark buildings. Also, we have big territories that we uh, that are located near Lisnaya metro station. These are the student uh, campuses with a lot of uh, green plantings, parks, and different facilities providing for the overall infrastructure uh, of the campus. So going back to the presentation, already mentioned the overall goal, which is reduction of CO2 emissions. Uh, so how we could implement this? First, uh, in energy sector and uh, waste management, emission management. Also, uh, we need to take on board the transport component, reconstruction of the main facilities uh, in just healthy uh, foodstuffs, uh, sustainable purchases and uh, in, uh, procurement and biodiversity. Next slide. So, um, we mean flora, fauna. We have both uh, as to flora. We have over 30,000 uh, different uh, species. Each of them have their own environmental certificate and even some uh, just little bush or a big tree uh, diseases, if any. Also, we have some kind of birds and uh, some minor uh, mammals uh, about different uh, species of rodents. Uh, uh, inhabiting it. Uh, do you have any bigger ones? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, uh, this is no longer a peripheral area of the city. It has evolved to become already one of the central neighborhoods. And in St. Petersburg, we don't have very good atmospheric air quality in all the districts and neighborhoods of the city, unfortunately. And only those members animals and animals uh, that can adapt to these conditions uh, can persist. So these are minor rodents mostly. Yes, uh, I remember one of the presentations by um, uh, the, the head of the environmental committee who said that uh, over 50 different species of rodents can be found on the territory of St. Petersburg. Ten of them are on our campus. First and foremost, these are squirrels uh, who, are, who easily adapt. People uh, love them and feed them, uh, so this is in terms of biodiversity. So, but I wanted to focus on each of these major um, sec sections, uh, energy, uh, uh, consumption and emission management. Uh, definitely, we uh, try to reduce uh, energy consumption based on fossil fuels, and we have uh, had our own power station from the days, first days of the old campus. However, we switched on to new technologies, uh, so we're producing heat uh, uh, in a uh, more environmentally friendly ways, uh, and we are updating our technologies. Also, uh, we are implementing a whole range of uh, different methods and techniques using uh, renewable energy sources. Uh, first, uh, so traditional renewables. Uh, solar and wind energy. You can uh, put on a new slide, please. We can see some of the photos uh, of these installations. Uh, it, on, on some buildings, we have solar panels. On, on the roofs of some other buildings, we have wind uh, mills. Uh, and uh, uh, we're actively using uh, these new renewable energy sources to replace the fossil fuel produced energy. Uh, all the buildings uh, are equipped with uh, new uh, new generation energy meters and, uh, and uh, 
new uh, bulbs, uh, LED, and others uh, that we are relying upon to uh, emphasize the uh, sustainable dimension of our new campus. We will have a new campus site built between uh, Nauki Prospect and uh, uh, Nutter Street. Uh, we'll, these will be constructed relying upon new standards, uh, using new energy efficient material and uh, new heat and power uh, production installations who will be more energy efficient. So it's going to be a, a whole campus um, area. These are the old buildings. Uh, we, further, we will see it, it'll look like a, a huge new neighborhood of the city that will be based on the new energy uh, efficient, uh, efficient buildings with higher uh, energy performance. This is how we control the process. Uh, so we have uh, specific consumption uh, benchmarks. Um, we seek to minimize um, uh, waste and emissions. We need, uh, seek to increase uh, the energy awareness of both the staff members and students uh, the, and uh, as to energy efficiency, we can um, measure it using these kind of grids, uh, the way uh, we're going to achieve it and how we seek to reduce uh, annual values uh, will save uh, energy and uh, reduce the uh, number of uh, volume of emissions. Uh, next slide, please. These are the major trends in energy consumption and emission reduction in our Polytechnic University. You can see uh, the declining trend for energy consumption and uh, uh, new uh, fuels over time. Uh, here you can see the waste uh, management and emission management plans. Uh, basically, it's a very promising trend. You can see on the graph, and we're going to proceed along this, these lines in the future to further improve it. Next slide, please. It's the same um, uh, uh, data about energy consumption and so on. So environmental uh, management program is uh, a kind of an umbrella uh, for uh, uh, environmental management and all the measures we take uh, the, by obtaining an ISO environmental certificate 14,000 we are going to move forward uh, to this new 21,000 uh, very soon we hope to obtain it next slide please uh, uh, here I, uh, I'm illustrating uh, so this energy efficiency techniques that we have. So there's windmills fixed on tops of our buildings and solar panels and cells uh, in uh, various modifications that we have on roofs or other sides of our buildings. Next slide, please. Uh, as to the policy uh, of our university. Uh, I've enumerated some of the most important goals and objectives that we have announced as a university. Uh, I'm not going to read through. You can see some of the re uh, we're aiming at reductions of energy, water, and raw material consumption, and many others. So coolers or water dispensers that we seek to install everywhere, it's another step towards the new, introducing new green technologies and uh, promoting Acre campuses, so about 450,000 liters of water that uh, um, go through these coolers or water dispensers. So it's a four, a 40 tons uh, of CO2 uh, uh, reduction. Um, due to uh, reduced consumption of bottled water. Uh, well, now speaking about the laboratory of physical and chemical methods of analysis and treatment of natural and uh, 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 wastewater. And uh, so we uh, 
just uh, organizing um, uh, sewage facilities uh, in a more efficient way so that we uh, recycle and uh, which is treat the, the wastewater before dumping it. So our laboratory offers a whole range of different innovative techniques of treatment and uh, we can uh, treat uh, water in order to uh, dump it into the overall sewage system. So each university has a kind of uh, just a domestic uh, the sewage system. Uh, however, uh, different laboratories can uh, generate different uh, pollutants, uh, hazardous and uh, chlorine containing uh, substances. Hence, uh, the, the treatment, water treatment uh, methods should be laboratory specific, addressing both the energy efficiency ish problem and uh, cost and quality of treatment as well. Next slide, please. So the, the, this is again uh, the slide illustrating the activities of uh, the same laboratory of water treatment uh, and others. So it's uh, the same. Next one. Here you can see uh, different control methods and uh, monitoring of wastewater. Uh, express methods have become our major focus recently and our distant uh, monitoring technology uh, that uh, it is very useful. You do not need to depend upon the meters that you install on the piping system, but just uh, using the already existing de the sensors and detectors using satellite and internet technology you can control and monitor them uh, of uh, online and as we also propose uh, some specific technologies for the uh, Russia Water Body, Water Authority. Next slide, please. So, of course, we uh, introduce the findings of research programs uh, to uh, university study programs and involve our graduate and postgraduate students. I already mentioned a new ECHO campus that we are to introduce uh, in the five years to come, and you can see it on the uh, slide on the left bottom slide. It's a, It has to occupy a whole neighborhood, so uh, it's bordered by the Gretansky Prospect and Nauki Prospect. So it's only the university buildings, but also dormitories, yes, uh, dormitories and different business uh, uh, venues and centers. It's uh, not only study buildings, but it's going to be a whole uh, area, a whole neighborhood built up to ensure the uh, high com comfort of buildings. So these are not study buildings, but it's as a little uh, city of the future. Well, some of the buildings might be used for educational purposes, however, not all of them. Next slide, please. So uh, the waste uh, management and handling uh, is closer to my original uh, field of expertise. Like I said, I uh, was the uh, head of the similar department, and I uh, was an author of uh, two major uh, city-wide concepts of, collect of waste collection and uh, management. Uh, it was one in, within the life program of the EU Commission that was dealing with environmental protection. And environmental protection. It was financed by our city. The government co-financed it. And under this program, the concept was realized that it was once approved at the end of 2000s, but unfortunately, it hasn't been finally implemented. People, the decision makers were constantly changing, and uh, so different trends were applied. Since then, uh, uh, Fedorov was your rector. He complained that his wife was scolding because there was a, a, a scent of waste or garbage. 
мы были в этой тематике. Мы были в этой тематике, 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 в activity uh, and urbanization typical for St. Petersburg that was uh, implemented in the natural environment and on this basis it was calculated using supercomputers using uh, different options of uh, waste management and waste handling in St. Petersburg and as a result several concepts were generated which were then approved. As to our campus, we tried to implement a pilot project and we have made several uh, in innovations. That was rather long ago, and now the students uh, have carried on the project because once it uh, was forgotten, now uh, the students' uh, organizations are carrying on this project, uh, similar to Yenina. There are some enthusiastic students uh, who in the last years uh, created a system with support of the authorities of the university, the system on a, a separate collection of waste. And initially that system was realized under life program at the municipal uh, unit as well as the, in Moscow uh, district. There were 15 sites with separate uh, waste collection in 2006. Now in the university we have some sites and waste is collected. And all the waste is collected in these containers. Different containers are used. Uh, with the assistance of the students, we conducted an extensive research on different micro districts, on different sites, on classifying the buildings, what waste uh, prevails in what type of buildings. Really, we can classify the buildings based on the type of waste. For instance, uh, one uh, building was constructed in a certain uh, year, and different people uh, live there. We can classify it on the basis of the contents of the uh, garbage bins uh, in the uh, buildings and say what categories of uh, residents live in these buildings. In uh, certain uh, containers uh, there were a lot of plastic and others a lot of foodstuff. These were uh, no, scientific people might also examine the contents of the containers, not only uh, the homeless people, just to investigate the process. So, uh, Finland once started this project and they were interested in the uh, composition of their residents, whether they were rich or poor, middle class, and that was uh, done in the, by the government of the city of Turku. And they said, let us analyze what is the percentage of the rich people, the poor people and the middle class people. And they say that we should also, uh, they said that we should also do it in St. Petersburg in representative districts. And we have done it. And on this basis, you can determine what containers we need in what location, where we have to correct, uh, collect more plastic, where we have to collect more uh, waste, uh, food waste, and different packages might also be collected. Sometimes there are cities and towns. I participated in the international project uh, uh, where uh, the uh, waste from the street is quite uh, extensive and uh, sometimes manure is the uh, just most important uh, source of waste when the animals are uh, crossing the streets, are walking along the streets. So these are the containers and the volume of the containers that are necessary where we have to place these containers. 
this is a problem that is not easily solved. It might seem quite simple, but on the other hand, we have to apply a scientific approach and we might improve the efficiency of the project. As to waste handling properly, we have set up a whole laboratory complex, and this laboratory complex we simulated using thermal box and reactors. We simulated a landfill for a solid household waste. In these bioreactors, there was biodegradation. We produced biogas. We also used that biogas as a renewable energy source for replacing the fossil fuel. Of course, biogas, you might object that it is also polluted by different substances. It would take a, a common landfill. But there was a whole uh, uh, just uh, process of different types of treatment. We're using adsorbents and cretin, and we uh, produced uh, uh, pure methane that we used as an, uh, uh, just a uh, fuel for internal and external combustion engines. And at the laboratory, we also used biohydrogen by reforming. We split uh, H4 into hydrogen and carbon dioxide, and that hydrogen was also used as hydrogen fuel for other purposes. On the one hand, for getting producing energy via fuel uh, cells, and on the other hand, we tried to use biogas in transport vehicles. There was even a car based on Volga 24 uh, using syn gas. Uh, the engine was using that syn gas. So that is a close cycle of using waste and reducing West, which we applied at our laboratory, and all the stages of biodegradation were investigated by us. You can see the bins and the containers for separate collection of waste, which we have at St. Petersburg uh, Polytechnic campus, and different types of waste which we collect separately. The table shows uh, the reporting materials for different buildings in the campus and the type of the waste that is collected. Next slide. Has some problems with time. I can also discuss transport. We have a lot of solutions for transport, uh, eco-mobiles, uh, uh, cars on solar batteries, but I won't uh, elaborate on it. Uh, as to uh, biodiversity, I can tell you that the entire vegetation which we have in that campus is protected by our scientists and our environmental management, which we have. Moreover, we tried, as was mentioned by Nina, uh, to do the following. Uh, all modern business centers and not only laboratories but classes often have uh, polluted air and quite often the ventilation is not operational and the ventilation that we have is even more harmful to that uh, air environment in the rooms and premises. Our scientists also developed the so-called biomodels. They selected special plants uh, which existed in special eco-modules, which uh, just uh, provided nutrients to them, and they watered themselves. And uh, during the month, the person did not interfere. But the plants were selected in such a way that they absorbed harmful substances uh, present in the air of these rooms. First, the scientists studied the air environment and the chemical and biological features of their environment, they assessed them, and then uh, they uh, set up biomodels so that the plants that were specially selected and the botanists know what uh, plants absorb certain harmful substances. So the plants were selected and they could absorb the harmful substances and uh, produce useful products. And so that the plant would not perish itself, it would support itself. There was a computer system with uh, water and light and the fertilizers that were pumped once a month. 
and the botanists were taking care of that uh, installation that is uh, biodiversity and of course educational activities that was uh, quite widespread and the international project we implemented more than 14 environmental projects and uh, I uh, took part in 14 environmental projects some are international projects some of them are listed here and partly the results were implemented at our eco park since we don't have any time left that is the end of my presentation I envied your students because uh, you uh, gave a very interesting presentation and you're really fond of your work. That's great. I think that that should be the end of our session. I would like to thank all the participants, offline and online participants, and to all the listeners. The listener who uh, we have uh, brought here and those people uh, who are connected via the internet, thank you very much. And I hope that we have informed you that green solutions not only improve the lives uh, of the universities, they're also accessible for the entire population of our country and uh, in other countries. Thank you very much. All the best to you. Спасибо.